Um, so as a portrait artist, we can't just be copyists. We can't just um, rely on our senses. If that's all it took, then, you know, the, the, the young, talented people with the best eyesight would be the greatest artists. And we all know that's not true. Um, it's sad, but we've all seen young, talented people who don't nourish their talent. In a way, they can waste their talent. So it's, it's going to be the, um, the hard work, the knowledge, and the experience that makes you, you know, really um, weather the storm and, and, and maybe leave something great behind for uh, future generations. So as portrait artists, I think number one, you have to love people. That's my personal belief. Uh, if you're not interested in people, if you don't have an opinion about different individuals, then I, I think portraiture is really going to be a, um, kind of a slog for you. But if you like people, then it's going to be joyful every time you meet somebody new and you're just excited to learn about them and paint their portrait as an individual. Um, so you, you got to like people. I, I just want to say that first and foremost. And um, then you're going to need a lot of knowledge to be successful. So one thing we talk about a lot uh, in portraiture is proportions, you know, the height to width ratio of somebody. And that's going to determine male or female. It's going to determine um, the age of a person. Obviously, a little kid is going to have um, much different proportions and forms than an adult. And an elderly person will, will have a different stature than a middle-aged person. So proportions are very important when it comes to likeness. Um, might even tell you about the person's lifestyle. You know, if they're, if they're uh, a laborer, if they're big and strong, if they're, they're sort of um, delicate and uh, they stay inside all day. You know, things like that, which are interesting and very specific. Um, then you have the organic rhythms of the body. You know, if we can accept that we're not machines, we are organic, flowing, um, natural beings, then there's gonna be an organic flow to the, to the body. And I'll try to talk about that, linear rhythms. That's how we coordinate the parts into a symphonic design. So those are rhythms. And, um, Thirdly, we'll have the uh, anatomy, which some call gross anatomy. And gross anatomy, you know, as a medical doctor would be, you know, the skeletal system, the muscles and tendons, ligaments, the fat pads, the glands, the skin, the hair. You know, these are all very important things. And those things can be learned from a book. They can be memorized. Um, and I always tell this little story that I get a lot of doctors and surgeons in my class and they may know more about the eye socket than I do as far as the names of these parts or maybe the cartilage of the nose if they're a plastic surgeon but I can come around and look at their sculpture and it can be a complete mess so how does that make sense you know how is that possible and it really comes down to what I refer to as knowledge versus wisdom. And your knowledge base is, is a vocabulary list. It's that gross anatomy list. Knowledge are facts that you can memorize. And if you, know, if you have a, um, generally a, a good IQ and you, 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 know, you can uh, memorize things, then you can gain knowledge. But then the question becomes, what do you do with your knowledge? And that's where um, being an artist uh, really requires a lot of wisdom. So wisdom, I heard someone once say, it's the ability to organize knowledge. Okay? So the ability to organize, use, and connect the, um, the facts into the truth, let's say. So, you know, I do believe as an artist, we... Um, should be 
truth seekers in the end. And, you know, a lot of people have, have a problem with that word truth, but, uh, you know, I think it's really important. So always uh, maintain a curious mind and never stop learning and sort of, you know, never think you've arrived. Um, always be searching and, and reading and going to museums and travel if you need to. And, you know, um, stay curious and continue, continue to evolve as an artist. And the old saying is, the more you learn, the more you learn how much you don't know. I'm paraphrasing that uh, saying. So I'm going to delve into, um, you know, the action, which is a chapter I didn't mention. The action, which would be the, the pose. The proportions, I talked about height to width. Um, we have the um, gross anatomy which would be some of the parts of the, the skull and, the, and the, the muscles and tendons. And then um, we'll get into some rhythms to coordinate it. And the last chapter that I'm really going to focus on, which relates to that, that theme of wisdom, is the geometry of the head. So the geometry will really help you organize all of the um, anatomy into something useful into something beautiful, into something simple, um, something profound, something timeless, something palatable. So you don't want, at least personally for me, I don't want my artwork to be um, sort of an exercise in you know, anatomical parts. Uh, it's not to show you how much I know necessarily. It's really to um, express the beauty of somebody in the most fundamental way, to strip somebody down to their essence, to their core, to sort of a concentrated, simplified version of who they are, so that um, from a distance, the viewer or someone who knows them will just go, wow, that's them. That's them, or that's somebody, that's like somebody I know. That reminds me of my, uh, my grandfather or my you know, a childhood friend. And I think that's what a great portrait can do. And maybe when you've seen a, a great sergeant portrait, you have that feeling um, that maybe you know that, you feel like you know the person even though you don't. Um, so that's why this talk is called Timeless. I think it's called Timeless Geometry. And it really is timeless. So that you can look back at Greek art, which is very geometric, and almost get the feeling that maybe you know the person or Roman portraits or or the Renaissance, um, it really is timeless. Okay, so, so we're gonna start with the male head and then I'll go into the female head and I hope you enjoy it.